well welcome back guys to this third video on lighting this is one of the most fun parts of the scene setting up the scene and actually the final part of setting up the scene but also can be the tricky one um so in the past most of my layouts most of my designs you know i have a significant amount of the, the work has a lot of dark shadows in there so have a lot more dark shadows and then less light uh, bright parts in my scenes but for this one i was my goal was to aim to have uh, uh somewhat of a decent amount of light in it like I, I really wanted the scene to be really lit properly not super bright but um just really lit um um then my then some of my previous work and so with this with this layout with this scene if you can see you know this wall here has a potential to cast a lot of shadows on this side if the light is coming from this side if the light's coming in here there's going to be shadows here and also an amount of shadows in the ceiling okay so let's start from the from the kitchen so just a heads up i i've already done a couple of experiments like it took me i would say about six seven tries out even more, more than that about 10 tries of just to get the lighting to a place where i'm really satisfied with it so this this video is basically just going to show you my final outcome rather than just take you through tons of videos and just waste time um so what i did was because this wall was block was going to block a significant amount of light coming in through here and so the kitchen would only have um light from this side so what i did was i made my own custom lighting with a cube and so that's here that's uh well that was the last one let's do this one so the reason why i have these two custom lightings here and so how i made these was Press V on the keyboard, click the cube, drag it down. Okay, and so once you drop the cube, you go up to your uh, magic wand to select the top. So make sure, make sure the selection is on tiny. And then select the top, click here, go up to your materials, click glow. And so I'm gonna press one on my keyboard to rotate. So what happens is the glow effect is only on the top. So basically the light. So I've set my custom lighting just on this part of it. Okay. So I'm going to press V again, click away, click back on it. I'm going to click here and just drag it down, reduce the size, drag it out and bring it here, uh, rotate and then rotate like this. And then I just set it up there. Okay, that's basically what I did. So I'm just gonna select this one. So for this one, the glow intensity, I set it to 100% and then I just changed the color of the light. So that's what that's what you can see here. If I just turn it a little bit so you can see here. And the reason why I put the intensity at 100% was because because uh, it's it is close to the subject and so anything above a hundred in the 200 it's just going to be too much light um shining in the specific direction that the that the cube or the custom light is pointing and so just to have it a little soft i just put it at 100 um after several tests i just decided on 100 um and so why i had it on 100 um or why i had these lights pointing in that direction is let me let me turn one of them off okay and then let's go here let me actually turn them off both off and just run just render and see what it looks like okay so now it's dark and then i'm just going to add one light in there and i'll just let it render well oh, that's the top one okay And sometimes you might have it slow down just because of your processor um 
in your system but yeah okay so now you see how significantly it's different and so if you remember from video one this is actually an image behind a glass material okay let me show you that again if you missed that video please go back to tutorial one I'm setting up the scene and that would help you make a lot more sense okay um so yeah so it's an image behind a thin glass material okay and so to help this image pop out more it needs an amount of light because the image itself cannot pr produce its own light so that's why i did a custom light to shine on it to help the image pop a little bit more okay and so i had it point that direction just because i wanted to, to light up the image but also this corner of the piece and then i added a second one to just add a little warmth so the first light as you can see is white it's just straight up white so i just added um a yellow warm feel to it and then this is what it looks like let me change the view go to render so you can see how the warmth really helps light up this corner okay but then the second problem after after setting up those two lights the second problem i had was the bottom here under the table was really dark like i wanted a bit more lighting on the bottom here and so i added another custom light over here on the ground okay so this one the goal is to shine it under the table to help light up this part so if i go into the view and let's just zoom in a bit and then render see how it helps light up this portion here light up this chair and just you know help this chair stand out a little bit more so once i was able to figure that out then I, then the next problem that I had to solve was um, the main, the large area, the living room. Okay, so now um, you might be thinking, hey, why not just shine the light directly, you know, in this front facing here and then boom, everything is fine. Well, I actually decided to have it in both ways. When I tried it, try to have the light shine just in this cube, just this front facing, what I realized was the top here was lacking light. Okay. And so what I did was, uh, I think it was this one. Let me see. Okay. Yes, that's the one. So basically what I did was you go up to lights you click on it and then i picked a circle light and it just appeared here. you just click on it it just appeared here, and i just named it um living room and what helped me know which angle the light is pointing so once your light is selected here on the rotation that's the degree of which it goes so now mine is negative 47 degrees but look at the shadow so it's very important to use the shadows if you're inside your piece inside your layout and you're using the shadow it's i mean you can tell by the reflections but sometimes um i find that to be difficult to kind of um know which direction the light is pointing so i prefer to just zoom out look from the top and then negative 47 and then i know okay this is the angle that i wanted to point and so it is pointing on this whole section here so once i got that done now if i render that one and see what it looks like with the kitchen also on the front okay it looks pretty good it's soft it's nice a decent amount of light 
is in the living room, but now the top is kind of dark. The ceiling is kind of dark. So then I zoomed out and then I added another circle light by clicking add another circle light on there to light up the ceiling. And so for this one, because it's lighting up the ceiling, let me turn off this. Uh, so because it's lighting up the ceiling, it's pointing upwards. So you won't have any shadows. You, you won't be able to tell. So it took a couple of tries to make sure it's selected. And then if I zoom out, so it's negative 59. Oh, sorry. It's supposed to be um, negative 59. It's actually the height. Okay. So it's actually the height. So negative 28. You can see. So now it's from the top. Look, look at the shadow inside here, how it moves. Now it's moving out, out, meaning the light is coming lower. It's coming lower, lower. Okay. It's going lower, lower. And so that's where it had it. Eight. Yeah, I think it was negative 59, negative 28. Yeah. Okay. So then now I have it pointing up to the ceiling. So when I render with the bottom one also. So now the bottom part is lit and then the ceiling is lit it still has a, a, an amount of shadow but that is perfectly fine okay that's going to be um that would change once i add my third light and so that is the sun so you click on the same section light and then click on sun and then it comes in there okay so this is what it looks like without the without the sun in there and so now after i add my sun i click on it and then I zoom out. So let me turn off these two so you know which direction the sun is coming from. So the sun is coming from this angle. Okay. So you can see with the shadow, you can see the direction in which the sun is coming from. Okay. And you can also see this deep shadow line which shows the angle at which the sun is coming into the piece. And so for that one, I had the rotation at 14, negative 14 degrees and then a height at 20.5 degrees. So a helpful thing with the sun is to also use clouds. So the clouds, the more, the more the percentage, the softer the light, the less the percentage the more intense the light is. So I just had about 14% to have it just, just a little bit soft, but not too soft. Um, and so if I go back to my main view and then click the render just with the sunlight, I mean, that, I mean, that looks really cool, you know, with the deep shadows. And this is usually how some of my work in the past, um, usually look like, but for this one, I decided to add more light. So when I add back the other top and bottom circle light, so I turn it back on and then let all three of them render together. And so each of them have a different varying, uh, they, they all vary in their intensity. That is also really important. The notice so for the sun I have it at 118 percent of intensity that's why you can see it you know somewhat clearly defined here so this is the sun with the top one i have it at 69 percent, so a lot lower and then for the light shining at the bottom level i have it at 56 percent 
and the reason why it's that low so it's not overpowering the sun i want the sun to be one of the main lights that can be seen in the piece um and so that's pretty much it guys pretty much my process um i would encourage you this can get somewhat challenging and frustrating sometimes but uh because i've practiced with reference images in the past so i kind of have an idea of the feel that i want or the direction in which i want my light to come from and so if you if you find yourself struggling with this i would encourage you to just go off of a reference go onto pinterest some kind of photo of a room or something and just study um study the direction of the light study the, the how the light looks like in the corners how it looks like on the walls um how how deep the the shadows are how light the shadows are um you know how soft they are like look at this shadow line is so it's a well-defined line compared to this one which is somewhat less defined but it's still there um and so yeah thank you guys um for for checking out this video hopefully this was a helpful tutorial um and uh if anything gets confusing feel free to rewind go back um and you can also ask a question in the dm in the in the in the uh in, in the bottom and i will do my very best to try to explain it um to you but yeah once again thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for liking my videos um and do check out other ones so you take care and uh have a great time or day wherever you are